Hello, my name is James Mulvaney. Welcome to this video. Now, over the past 15 years, I have helped literally tens of thousands of broadcasters and podcasters get their ideas off the ground, launch them, make them successful and make them profitable. And I've worked with podcasters, I've worked with radio presenters, and I've worked with radio station owners and entrepreneurs all over the world. I own radio.co, podcast.co, and matchmaker.fm. Those are my three software companies. And I really enjoy making videos like this one to reveal some of the industry secrets, the stuff that the big corporations don't want you to know. So in today's video, we're gonna be revealing five secrets behind starting a radio station or myths that are flying around. And I'm gonna just debunk them and make it nice and clear. Coming up right now. So here's the thing, over the past sort of five or six years, maybe 10 years, the radio industry has seen a big shift. It's seen a shift from lots and lots of just radio stations in different local areas to centralized output. Now, this makes sense if you're a radio company and you're buying up lots of small radio stations in local areas and you want to reduce your costs. But I think as consumers, as listeners, this is a great shame because we suddenly stripped of our choice. We haven't got that local DJ that we want to listen to or that lo local news programming or local traffic information. And we haven't got individual tastes in music which are catered for. Instead, you're kind of seeing radio stations starting a one-size-fits-all brand. They repeat the same like playlist of 20 songs all day, every day, and they have like one or two shows which are centralized and broadcast from one location. That because of this, the actual program that's being produced isn't customized to the local area or has very little customization. And of course, the on-air personality generally doesn't live in that area and they have no idea. So what we're seeing recently is more and more local radio stations springing up as a replacement of the traditional sort of FM radio stations uh, that are now been replaced by these big centralized broadcast houses. We're seeing lots of hyper-local stations being created using our platform at radio.co, which are broadcast digitally, you know, online via the internet, and also some of them broadcast via digital radio as well, because the cost of licensing and uh, transmission on digital radio has also gone down recently. So what I wanted to do today is sort of debunk five myths that these big radio corporates probably don't want you to know. They want to keep this stuff under wraps because the more more radio stations that spring up, of course, it's gonna drive their profits down and they're gonna lose control over the market. Personally, I think it's a good thing. I think we want to be offering listeners more choice. We want to be giving people the choice of what sort of music they can tune into. If they can listen to a local on-air personality, you know, perhaps like you, who has great knowledge of the local area and something interesting to say, and they're not kind of just robots sat in a room just repeating the same tagline over again and again. You know what I mean? So let's dive in and we're gonna cover off five myths that the radio industry probably don't want you to know. All right, so let's start off with the most common myth that we get customers coming to us all the time and saying, I'm thinking about launching a radio station, but it's gonna be too expensive. I don't have millions of pounds to, or millions of dollars to invest in you know like this big fancy studio with all this big equipment and you know, fancy cables and everything like this. Well, first of all, yes, you can spend hundreds of thousands or millions of pounds fitting out big fancy studios. But the way technology has developed over the past sort of 10 years or so, and with services like radio.co, there's no need to do this anymore. You can run your radio station using a cloud-based platform. The benefit of it being cloud-based, of course, is that you know it's all sitting there in the cloud, which means you don't need to buy endless boxes of equipment and servers. And a lot of companies who supply to the radio industry also want you to think that that's the only way of doing it. And it's not. Because of technology, how things have devolved, you can run a radio station, it can be broadcast online, and also it can then be simulcast via a transmitter of some sort, either digital radio or FM or AM. And it can all run from the cloud. It can all run from the internet, meaning you don't need to even run your computer overnight. You can switch your computer off, you can turn off your mixer, you can turn off your mic, and the automation will run your station from the cloud 100%. Now, if you're interested in learning more about radio.co and what we offer, you go and check out our website, of course, but stay tuned for the end of this video because I've actually got a special offer which I'd love to share with you and um, give you some more information and can also give you a really solid startup checklist which will allow you to launch your station as quickly as possible. But myth number one, you need to spend a fortune setting up your radio station. Complete load of rubbish. Our plans at radio.co start from $29 a month. Very, very cheap and easy to get started. All right, so myth number two, it's really technical. 
you know, you need some expert knowledge, you need to go and hire a broadcast engineer to get your radio station up and running. You then need to go and hire, you know, a website developer or expert to kind of set up the online streaming and that sort of stuff. Again, this is not true. I can't understand why there's this perception that running a radio station need be really complicated because ultimately as presenters or as program directors, what we want to do is entertain our audience. So why should we have to understand the ins and outs of technical stuff and how to set everything up? And basically all I want to be able to do is take my microphone here and plug it into my computer and just start talking. And that's what I want to do because I want to entertain my audience. I don't want to have to understand about, you know, transmission levels or, you know, how to install a complete studio. And again, this is why we built radio co because we wanted to make it as easy as possible for anyone to start a radio station who perhaps doesn't have experience on the technical side of things but maybe they do have more experience on the programming side or the presentation side or music curation so we've designed the platform to be as simple as possible you don't have to understand what goes on behind the scenes you don't need to understand you know how something plays out at a certain time it just works the interface has also been designed so it's super easy to use again no complicated or ugly hard to use desktop software required it all runs from the cloud and the great thing about running from the cloud is you know you can log into your browser you can control your radio station and you can access it from anywhere so you've got your laptop with you you can actually start making changes to your broadcast you can be scheduling different events it's point and click it's drag and drop and it's simple and easy to use but you don't need a degree in rocket science to start a radio station and you certainly don't need any experience with broadcast engineering although I would say if you can train yourself up on audio editing get familiar with how to you know record shows and um, brush up on your skills in terms of production on the computer that's really really useful and it really will help you uh, with launching a radio station all right myth number three is really time consuming if you want to start a radio station this is one of these things that comes up you know I don't have the time to put in to coordinate and run a radio station now running my own radio station for a couple of years here in Manchester um, I can say that you know there is going to be a certain amount of time commitment that is involved. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be there, you know, in front of everyone 24 hours a day. As I said earlier, the beauty of using a cloud-based platform is that, you know, your presenters can actually connect and broadcast from anywhere. They don't necessarily need to be in a centralized studio. Although interestingly, we did have a uh, centralized studio when I ran MCR Live here in Manchester. People loved that fact that they could come in and use that and it created a really good community hub. Ultimately, we did rely on a lot of volunteers. And I think one of the benefits to having a, an online radio station station is that there's always plenty of people who are willing to get involved and donate their time quite often for free or in return for you know gig tickets and things there's plenty of interesting things you can do when you're running a radio station to encourage people to get on board with the project and they will quite happily you know contribute their time you might have to take them out for lunch or take them out for some drinks once in a while you know if you've got a radio station you've got leverage for local businesses you have leverage for bands or gigs who are coming through town perhaps you want to send one of your staff to review that gig or well, getting free gig tickets is really easy to do in that case and it's a big reward for people who are donating their time just be clever about it. it doesn't necessarily mean you need to be doing every single aspect of it you might have someone who's looking after your music you might have someone else who is perhaps contributing towards your website writing blog posts managing your social media but I always think you know getting people involved in the project is the way forward and it will help you with your time management it doesn't necessarily need to be that it's your full-time role and it could be something that you know you have a big team of volunteers and contributors who will help you with with your programming, with your website, and with the general output of your radio station across the different channels. Okay, next up, you need a huge team to run a radio station. You know, you need someone to be sat there constantly controlling the output of your broadcast, pressing buttons. Well, again, this goes back to how technology has moved on. You know, I think gone are the days when you have to have someone sat there manning the studio 24 hours a day. Certainly gone are the days when, you know, you need a big team involved. You can run a radio station with a skeleton team. It could be three or four of you. It could just be one of you. It depends on how much output you want to create and you know, how many hours a day you really want to broadcast. Uh, we have plenty of clients who maybe just have a breakfast show and then a drive time show and the rest of the day is automated or pre-recorded. Again, it goes back to what I was saying in the last segment, rely on people who want to get involved in radio. There's so many people out there now who are looking for projects, are looking to get involved with something that's going to, you know, ignite the local community or they're really passionate about a certain type of music. So go out there online, it makes it super easy, you know, using social media tools or um, services like Reddit to kind of network and meet those people who could potentially be your team. 
there's plenty of people who are willing to give up their time to help out with the cool project. If you're launching a radio station for your local community, people love getting involved with that kind of thing. Or, you know, if you're launching a radio station which caters to a really specific genre of music, well, go out there and find people who are really big fans of that genre of music because they're more than willing to give, get involved and they're more than willing to be involved in a project that's exciting and it's really rewarding, and, you know, as, a, as an individual, as a music fan or as someone who's an advocate of a local area, to be involved in a project that can actually make a big difference to the listeners. And that's obviously what it's all about. That's why we're in radio. That's why we like broadcasting. That's why we like sharing our passion for music, right? It's to get the message out there to our audience and entertain people. And actually being part of a project like that can be tremendously fun and massively rewarding. So you don't necessarily need a big, huge team to run a radio station. However, if you can get people involved and you can get people on board with your idea, you'll be on to a winner. But you don't need a big, big team to get started. Okay, so myth number five is you need a lot of experience to start a radio station. Do you? Well, there are lots of people who we get on board and have been working in radio for say 20, 30 years, sometimes even longer, radio veterans, and they always kill it. However, we also see lots of people who are sometimes kids, like teenagers, who are like 16, 17 years old. They're super passionate about music. They've got an interesting idea for a brand or for a radio station, or actually they're looking to hone their craft and get experience behind the microphone and get some demo material in and then they start internet radio stations literally from their bedrooms and we have professional organizations who are creating radio stations for their internal communications so it really varies you know we get people of all walks of life starting radio stations but one thing that i've noticed again and again and again is experience doesn't necessarily equate to success there's absolutely no reason that you can't make a wild success by doing things completely differently to everyone else there's no set format there's no set you know way a radio station has to be run so having a vast amount of experience is not necessarily the key driver to building a successful radio station. What I'd say is, is having a really good idea and then having a good plan of execution, making sure you figure out exactly how you're going to then drive listeners or drive traffic to your website and get listeners on board and also retain that traction retain the listeners and I'm going to be creating videos on how you can do this on this channel so if you're not already subscribed I recommend you hit this like button because it helps with me you know creating videos for you and if I can see more people are watching them and enjoying them I'll create more of them for you and also subscribe so you get the latest updates and that sums it up there are five myths debunked I think the uh, big corporate radio industry probably don't want you to realize this stuff but you know it's not expensive to start a radio station you don't need a huge amount of experience or knowledge in the area you certainly don't need a lot of technical knowledge or a big fancy studio so there we have it five reasons uh, why they kind of don't want you to start a radio station I hopefully I've sort of turned them on the heads and flipped them around and given you some inspiration if you've got any ideas by the way I'd love to set you up with uh, a call with one of my team who will talk through your project give you a strategy to uh, get it into plan to get hold of this all you have to do is head on to my website if you go to jamesm.com slash radio that's jamesm.com slash radio I'll put a link down here for you you can download my five step radio startup checklist and as part of that I will also hook you up with uh, some free consulting time with one of my team where we will literally talk you through how to get started and show you exactly everything you need to know to launch your radio station so thank you very much for watching this video i look forward to making more videos like this for you and if you've got any comments or questions please just stick them in the comments below i'd love to uh, help you out thanks very much for watching and i'll take care bye for now